Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. I'll tell you a bit about parallelizing code using the message passing interface MPI. Um, it's very popular for C and Fortran, C++ too, um, though I will focus on Fortran in this part at least. So there are a few things to consider before actually starting parallelizing our code. So we must first debug our code if necessary. I mean, you, you will want to do this in any case, but before parallelizing, it is especially important because you may introduce new bugs in this paralliz parallelization process, like race conditions, deadlocks, or issues with the memory. So it is important that we have some kind of working state and later on we can compare the output of our parallel program to our serial program and see if it still uh, produces the correct result. We must then profile our code to identify where it, spent, uh, where it spends most of its time. And you may have already optimized the code, but if you haven't optimized and uh, if you haven't optimized it, optimize it then profile again, of course, because that can drastically change the amount of time spent in uh, the different routines. Okay, so once you've done that, we can identify um, regions of the code that are suitable for parallelization. Maybe it spends, uh, let's say, 10% of the time on initialization and another 10% at the end on outputting, write, writing to some file the results. The rest of the 80% is spent on the actual computation, maybe some big loop of the number of particles or grid points, whatever. Let's say that 80% uh, can be paralyzed well. Then in the ideal case, you can only gain a speed up of a factor of five. I mean, you completely get rid of this 80% of the time. That's not looking too great. So, it may be possible that your problem uh, doesn't parallelize well at all. Maybe you need to get, uh, maybe you need to go back to the drawing board to change the algorithm, or it may just be that the test case you're using is on such a small scale that if you, uh, well, that it spends a lot of time on the actual initialization, setting up the particles or the grids or whatever, and writing to disk stuff like that. Well, I mean, look how your code scales. I mean. Maybe the initialization scales uh, with n while the computation scales with n cubed. In that case, a real production run would have a much larger fraction of the time spent in the actual computational part, com actual computation part, and thus that may scale much better. Let's say it has 99.9% .9 of the time in the actual loop. Great. Okay. Um, so then we can parallelize. Yeah, hey. All right, so for C and Fortran, there are two popular ways to parallelize the code, OpenMP and MPI. Now, these are vastly different. So OpenMP, it's built on multi-threading, where you have one main thread that goes through the program until it encounters a parallel block. Here, it will spawn a pool of workers and together they tackle this uh, the work within this block then at the end they synchronize so they wait for all of the workers to complete before continuing and the pool will then be released and only the main thread continues until it reaches the next parallel block this is very different from mpi so in openmp you still only launch the program once but there are multiple threads within the program. In MPI, you launch the same program multiple times, multiple instances of the same program, and it is up to you to divide the work. Now, regarding the memory. So OpenMP is built for shared memory. This would work on your laptop, your desktop, or maybe one compute node within a cluster. Every thread has access to all of the memory within this uh, node but 
uh, well, by default everything is public, but you can specify private variables. This is nice in a way because let's say you are um, building up, you're filling up some large array with data and each thread uh, handles a part of it. Then you don't need to communicate this data at all because it's all in the same piece of memory and they all have access to it, read and write. Um, but the disadvantage of uh, limiting yourself to shared memory is you can't use multiple nodes at the same time. Uh, so this is a big limitation. I'm, I mean, I'm assuming that eventually you will want to go to uh, many, many cores on multiple nodes. And that is where MPI comes in. So that is built on distributed memory. So <coughs> each process has its own private region in memory and you can't uh, read or write what is going on in those other regions directly. This is facilitated through communi communication and this can even um, be done across multiple nodes. So everything is private, uh, though there is an exception MPI windows, but let's not get into that for now. Um, then the question remains, which one should we use? Well, you can use uh, either one or even both, but I would say go for MPI first, because if you want to go to multiple nodes, you need MPI anyway. And then if there are some scaling issues, you might use uh, OpenMP on top of the MPI so that you have one process per node and then within the process you have uh, multiple threads, one for each core. Right. Um, lastly, the MPI standard, this is basically a book that details how MPI sh uh, should operate. You can find it online on the official website, it's for free. And there are multiple imp implementations of this. Intel MPI, there's OpenMPI, not to be confused with OpenMP. Um, well, a few more, but these basically implement the standard. But if you're at some point thinking, ah, uh, how, this, how did this work again? You just consult the standard and it's all um, explained there in quite a lot of detail. In my previous video, I talked a bit about Coalray Fortran, which is basically a wrapper for Fortran for multi-processing, um, <coughs> multi um, which can use MPI um, behind the scenes. It doesn't need to use that, but a lot of people in fact don't use the Coalrays. They just call the MPI routines directly, which is what I will show today. All right. All right, so now let's take a look at our Hello World MPI example. First, you must make sure to install one of the MPI implementations, one of these libraries. And I'll use OpenMPI uh, for this example. So at get install open. Um, oops, so apt get install open MPI bin, at least that works for me on Ubuntu. But I've already done this, so there's no need to execute this for me now. Um, this will then give you a new uh, compiler, MPI Fort. And what it basically does, it calls uh, gfortran. Uh, plus, it sets up a bunch of environment variables and makes sure it automatically includes and links the necessary files from the MPI library. So it's just easier for you to use. It's, it's a wrapper. Fine. Um, test. So <clears throat> let's create our program now.
So now we must specify um, which MPI log library to use. You can just type use MPI and it's easy as that. Um, however, I recommend to use MPI F08 if you are making a, uh, a new program because this is the the newest version of the MPI standard. Uh, yeah, it's it's a bit unfortunate, but there are now two versions, so just MPI and MPI F08 uh, with slight differences. But if you're making new programs or not building on some existing MPI program, then you might as well go for the newest one. Okay, um, let's see. So before you can call any MPI routine, you must first initialize the interface. And for that we do call MPI init. And it takes an argument. Um, <coughs> uh, well, <coughs> this variable that stores the return value of the error in case there's a problem. Uh, in Fortran, this is added as additional uh, argument at the end. In C, it will be returned by the function, so there's no need to pass it as an argument. In Fortran it is, so yeah, let's do that. Then we must close this interface by call MPI finalize, with again the error. All right, um, now what we want to do is print the rank of each MPI task. So what is the rank? Uh, when we launch this program with, let's say, four uh, processes, then so four instances of the same program then each process gets an id basically a number which we call the rank and this goes from zero up till uh, the number of processes minus one so rank and there uh, also request the number of processes so call mpi uh, rank with the first argument will be um, MPI, MPI com world or another communicator this is basically a uh, specifying which group of processes processors we're talking about and MPI com world is all of them so it is their ID within all of the processors uh, together. Then uh, rank and at the, as the last argument as always, I error, the error uh, the year. Then we also would like to know the, the size of the total communicator. So how many processors uh, we have in total. And uh, well, that is not right. And box okay. And then let's print out our message. So it's normally we would use G4, uh, G4 Fortran, but now we will use MPI Fort. Okay, we can see a.out has been created and now usually you would do a dot slash a.out to execute it, which will run it uh, with one instance 
So hello, this is proc zero. We start counting at zero for the rank out of one processes. Um, <coughs> but um, you should actually use MPI run or MPI exec. And then you can specify the number of processes with uh, NP. With MPI exec, it is dash n instead of dash NP. Ah, well, it, that's the way uh, they designed it. <laughs> so with this um, command, we run it with four instances. And as you can see, uh, it works as intended. And I can even use it, uh, can even run it with six. And even more, but here I only have six cores. So if I do seven, it actually tells me uh, this is not allowed. It, it depends because on some platforms I, I was able to do that. And in, in practice, you wouldn't want to run with more processes than actual uh, cores or maybe factor two if we have hybrid threading or something like that but um, you wouldn't want to run with more because it is not efficient so then processes have to then cores have to switch between processes and such it's uh, messy so it makes sense that by default this is blocked um, but if we compare uh, the output with three instances and we run again, we see that the output is not always the same. And this is actually as expected because every time you run, it's basically a race for which process finishes first. And it's almost impossible to predict which one will be first. So it is different every time and it's not something you can rely on generally um, to build your program so if this order is important to you you must do some other steps anyway um, this is it for this tutorial and next time we'll look at some other stuff